It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's not. It's my. It's not my first rodeo. Yeah. Because on the flip side, I believe in a creator that's revealed a perfect scripture that affirms my belief. That's been perfectly preserved, which is tangible and testable. And on the flip side, yeah. And now you could challenge what you were saying, madam, in regards to wrong, right, um, subjective, like punishment, heaven, hell. We could go into that, but first, has my scripture been perfectly preserved? Let's Google Birmingham Quran manuscript, which has been carbon dated at the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Is there, has anyone been able to find any mistakes? No. Um, is the message being, is the message correct? Yes, because you've never heard anyone say, oh, there's a mistake in there. You know what I mean? No one's ever said, oh, it's been changed. So these are things that you already know, but leave that to one side, we'll get, we'll readdress it. And on the flip side, something came from nothing. Give me an example of something coming from nothing. There's nothing and suddenly ran with no cause. There's the universe comes into being through the Big Bang. Yeah, which I don't have an issue with the Big Bang. My issue is what caused the Big Bang. Isaac Newton's second law, cause and effect. And I'm saying what caused it, my evidence is in the Quran, that's something that's outside of the universe, that's all powerful, that's all knowing. How can there be so much design without design now? <laughs> Boom, <laughs> just dropping the mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, that's okay. That's yeah. just a good, it's a good interpretation. <laughs> good interpretation of what? Yeah, I, I like you, madam. You like to question, you like to challenge. I was like, your ideas are based on who is creating it. But it's you also, what about the theories and the idea? It's a bunch of rocks that clash together. And... I don't have an issue with that. Where did the rocks come from? Good question. <laughs> good question. Because I had, I, had I had this exact same conversation with a professor in quantum mechanics. Yeah. yeah? And he could tell me the exact moment the Big Bang happened. Yeah. yeah. And he's using all this sophistry and it's all nice and he's all like, I don't have faith, I trust, I have hypothesis. Yeah. I go, that's all good, that's all nice, right? But what, give me an example of something coming from nothing. And then he just walked away. He just walked away. And I'm like, we had a 20 minute conversation. I invested, I'm, I'm learning. Yeah, and he just walked off. Asalaamu yeah. Alaikum so, so now, if it's more logical and rational to believe in a creator, then why are you spending so much time not investing in gaining that necessary information? Because there's so many people. Yeah, like people, yes. people are allowed and able to change and adopt and advertise what they believe. Yeah. However, the Quran hasn't been changed. Yeah. So the truth is there. But this gentleman, with all of his swag, yeah, <laughs> hasn't got the time to read the Quran. Yeah. You with all your mind being open and questioning things and being interested in things and challenging yeah. things, you haven't made time to read the Quran. Yeah. And I'm standing here saying, if you find a single mistake in the Quran, it's not a word of God. Yeah. If you find a single mistake in the Quran, a single contradiction, you've rebutted and you've debunked Islam. And it's my challenge is, Shatir Sain, help me. If I'm wrong, then at least you can come back to me and say, look, this is wrong. I'll be like, damn, I'm going to go and live a hideous <laughs> lifestyle with no rules. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm, I'm, all, I'm okay with that because I'm not going to believe in a scripture that's from an all-powerful, perfect creator and it's not perfect. Does that make sense? I've had conversations with genuine Christians and we've had lengthy conversations and to the core of it, they're like, the Bible's from God. It doesn't need to be perfect. I go, you accept it's not perfect? They're like, yeah, I accept it. You accept it, man made me, elements gone into it, it's got mistakes in it, there's country. They're like, yeah. I go, firstly, thank you for being honest. Secondly, how can you believe in something is from God that's not perfect? So my claim is the Quran is perfect, hence God exists. 
disprove it. Does that make sense? Now, Quran talks about science, gets it right. Talks about history, gets it right. Makes prophecies, gets it right. Yeah, the linguistic miracle. My point is, you've got all like just a few moments ago, I had this Christian guy shouting at me. Right? <laughs> um, generally, Christians are polite, but some people get a bit overly emotional and they're like hecklers. They're just like. They don't want to have a discourse, yeah. but they just think like, if I, if, I, if I can talk louder, then you know, I win. Yeah? And then meet the challenge of the Qur'an. The Qur'an says, um, make, you can't, it's, make something similar to it. Make something, not similar to it, excuse me. It says, I will do the thing that um, bring something like it, even something like the chapter, which is only um, three verses long. So if you want to rebut to um, debunk um, the Quran, then get the linguistic miracles in three verses, do something like it, but you can't. And no one has been able to. Does it make sense? And I'm not saying that challenge to you because like, you're going to have to learn Arabic and then you're going to do that. But I'm like, people who are that invested, if you've got that much time to try to embarrass me or debunk what I believe, then come with something real. Does it make sense? You're saying that you can't make something out of nothing. Yeah. You've never seen a lot. Yes. So how can you know that there's actually something there? Brilliant. I'm going to raise that good question with another question. Yeah. In fact, I'm not going <laughs> to. Repeat your question, madam. Like, how can you, if you've never seen a lot, how can mm. you believe that something's there? Like, if you can't make something out of nothing. Okay, because the signs, mind blown, the <laughs> signs that there is a Allah that yeah. I haven't seen. Yeah. Um, I don't have any scientific, physical evidence to prove God exists. Yeah. However, the fact that the universe is here implies and is a sign that God exists, Allah exists. Yeah, because you need something that's outside of the creation to create it. Does it make sense? And the Quran gives a four-line definition of God. Yeah? And it's Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Say Allah is uniquely one. Yeah? Um, his self-sustaining eternal. So it's like sometimes uh, um, the question I was going to raise is um, who created God? Yeah? If you ask the question, who created God? It's like who created God that created God? Who created God that created God that created God that created God? Yeah. At a certain point, you need something that's uncreated or nothing would exist. Does that make sense? Yeah. So God is uh, independent, is not in need of anything. Does that make sense? It's self-sustaining. So when the question arises, who created God? That means the creation, the one that's created is dependent on the creator. We are the creation. We're dependent on the creator. Yeah. You know, I want, I want the facial expressions to be caught by the camera. Your mind is just being blown and the camera is missing it. Yeah, so much that. Yeah. So then it continues with, um, he did not, he does not have offsprings, nor was he born. God doesn't have children, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, nor was he born, nor was he created. These are verses I'm giving you from 1400 years ago that perfectly answers theology and actually answers your questions, my questions as someone who's logical and rational. Does it make sense? Because I think what ends up happening is we don't see Islam, we see other religions. Don't ask that question. Um, that's blasphemy or this, that. I'm saying that, look, ask all your questions and the religion from God has to satisfy all of them. Once you're satisfied, then believe. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. There's no doubt. If there's, if there's a class that I don't get this, yeah? let's sit down, let's have lunch, let's go through the scripture, let's get you to get it. Does it make sense? Because otherwise, God has made a condition for you to believe to enter paradise. Why would he give you something that you believe that defies logic and reason, intellect that God's given you? Islam is that within the realm of your intellect and your um, understanding, hence you can understand it. Now, I might not be able to explain it to you. That's my failure. I'll get someone who can. 
Does it make sense? And then someone will be able to explain to you and you will be satisfied and then that's it. But it's like with God, you know, you can't see it. You can't see it. Yeah. What about with uh, paradise or hell and the in-between and the day of judgment? How do you know all of that is actually a thing? Because it might be in the Quran, but what if it's not actually... It's a logical inference yeah. that if 80% of the Quran that can be proven correct is correct then that in ambiguous 20% must be correct Th that, then you're making assumptions that's it's not assumptions it's a logical inference so if 20% if 80% of it is proven correct yeah. yeah that's tangible that you can you can you can say that okay it says this um, and it's wrong yeah. yeah it talks about heaven and hell you can't prove it I can't disprove it yeah. talks about angels I believe in angels yeah like I said like you know um, once you're convinced then faith comes into it yeah so yeah, I believe in angels I believe in judgment day because the fact things that I can disprove I can't is, is factually correct yeah then that 20 percent must be correct how do you feel about that it makes a lot of sense yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're here giving three good ants would you be interested in two free Qur'ans? I can't, I can't do it now, can I? <laughs> yeah? Okay, I'm going to give you two free Qur'ans. Um, but while I have your attention, how do you feel about what I've said? What, what, what's the takeaway? Like, at the moment, because with me, I go through steps. So the first thing is, we're not even talking about religion. First thing is, even though I dipped into it, um, there's a creator. Creator is one. Because if you had multiple gods, they'll be like, um, they'll be arguing amongst themselves, they'll be like, you know what I mean? So there's one creator. Now the next logical step through that is, did God, Allah, create us with a purpose? The mic is back to you guys. I'm going to pick up the mic that I dropped <laughs> earlier. And then, yeah. I mean, it probably created us, like it's, it's a test, kind of. Like, created us like a test to see <laughs> If what he has created is good enough, kind of not good enough, but what he's created is something that's kind of worthwhile. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if I'm wording it correctly, but you're, you're very close. Yeah. Would you like to help her out? So I didn't even catch your name. My name is Ridwan. Oh, Floyd. 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 Yeah. Floyd. Floyd. Claire. Claire. Help clear out, man. Come on, Floyd. What are you doing? <laughs> Honestly, I'm bad. I don't say anything. Yeah. I don't know, that's the, that's the Islamic position yeah. that God created us to test us yeah. in regards to who's the best in these to earn paradise. Does that make sense? Bad people um, will go to hell. Does that make sense? Someone Hitler's in hell. <laughs> Damn. It if is what it is. If someone goes to like hell for maybe like petty sins or yeah. just small things. How many? 30 sins. That's like oddly. Oddly specific. Like, she, was, she was reading her diary. <laughs> One, two, three. I'm just going to number them. Do you know what I mean? Like, is that your limit? Like, I'm not going to go above 30 sins. And then you just approach me like, now, now I need God. I've done my 30 sins. I can repent. Go on. If, if say someone did, like for, for a small amount of sins that yeah. weren't too bad and they ended up going to hell for it because mm. that number of small sins mm. outweighed the better sins. Yeah. Like, not the better sins, the, the good things. The good deeds, yeah, yeah. Could you end up in paradise after a certain amount of time? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely, no doubt. Because what ends up happening is God, Allah didn't create hellfire for yeah. people. Does it make sense? Yeah. Um, God created paradise for people. Yeah. Yeah, and what ends up happening is, like you said, some of the sins we do um, will go to hell, and then you need to be punished. Like if you wrong somebody, yeah. does it make sense? Like you, you need to. There needs to be justice because Allah has ninety nine names above ninety nine names and attributes, and one of them is um, the most just. Yeah. That one is the most loving. Yeah. So then, how do you reconcile the two? The fact of the matter is. Allah is loving in the sense that He will send people to paradise. Yeah. Allah is just in regards to there will be repercussion and punishment for the ones who have just done wrong. Yeah. Does, it not, does it make sense? So the criteria for entering paradise isn't actually good deeds. The criteria for entering paradise is belief. Yeah. Having the correct belief. Good deeds is currency. Yeah. So the more good deeds you have, 
the higher the level in paradise. Yeah. Does so it make sense? Levels. Yeah, there's seven levels. levels. Oh, okay. And there's seven levels to hell as well. And there's an in-between place as well. Um, so, if you have the correct belief, now, what is the correct belief? The correct belief is the first pillar in Islam, which is the Shahada, which means testimony, which means, um, which is testifying that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And that Allah has sent prophets and messengers, specifically the Prophet Muhammad as his servant and messenger of God, the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. So, if someone had a medical, a medical condition like that caused them to harm people, okay, and they ended up harming someone or killing someone, yep. how would that be taken in the eyes of God or in the eyes of God? I love religion? it. I love these questions. <laughs> yeah. So there are things which are forgiven, yeah. things which are outside of your control, things that you do out of ignorance, yeah. things that you do out of forgetfulness and things that you do in your sleep. How do you do stuff in your sleep? Yeah. Now, because sometimes like um, I might be a security guard or something and then yeah. I fall asleep or I might have a um, dream about something naughty and then, you know, it is what it is, it's forgiven. Yeah. Um, so those elements, you're forgiven. Does that make sense? So it doesn't mean that like, I'm going to sin, I'm not going to learn about what's wrong and right and I'm going to live my life. But there's a certain point that knowledge is compulsory upon you. Yeah. Does that make sense? So at that point, you're accountable. And in Islam, we say, um, once you're physically developed, so you've gone through puberty, and you're mentally developed as well. So once you're of sound mind, there's no excuse for you to be sinning. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense, yeah. <laughs> a lot, everything in Islam makes sense. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the bold claim I'm making. Yeah. It all makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. There's some things that you might feel like, hmm, I'm not sure about it. It's not wrong. That's a product of, sus um, what's the word? Socialization. Does it make sense? So you've been socialized to have this opinion that, oh, that makes me feel uneasy because you're just not used to it. I could go to China, yeah, go into a restaurant. I'd be like, what's the most expensive thing on the menu? Stillborn babies. I'm like, well, I'm not sure if I want to eat a stillborn baby. <laughs> Excuse me? How dare you? Yeah. This is our specialist. That's it. This is, do you know how rare these are? I don't want to know. <laughs> Hopefully very rare. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But they're eating stillborn babies, cannibalism. But like, it's strange for us. Yeah, less extreme. Example, um, in other countries, people eat insects. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't know, like, I was speaking to a scholar about this in regards to if it's permissible to eat insects. Because I'm thinking like, we could get rid of world hunger with insects, you know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you're not going to do it. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Like, uh, yeah. Same here. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, it'd be crunchy. Like, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about it. But then, that being said, like, that like fish, fish can be crunchy. Like, you know, get them little fish, but it's like, I can eat a fish, but I don't want to eat a bug. Yeah. Go France, eat a snow. <laughs> and this funny thing, right? You know, in France, they don't actually have an age of consent. No. Strange, isn't it? That's, that's, that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> that's mad. How can you not have an age of consent? Yeah. Google it, look into it. It's fascinating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> close the mind. So, any other questions? Um, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, on that, on that bit of, bit of note. Um, okay, that being said, so I would say that look, God did create us for a purpose, told us what that purpose is <coughs> through prophets and messengers. <coughs> Talking about bugs, something like that, okay. Um, through prophets and messengers, men chosen amongst men to articulate God's message, to be a perfect example of do's and don'ts. Yeah? After they die, the message lives on through a perfect book, which is the Quran. Yeah. How do you feel about that? It's pretty spot on. <laughs> yeah. I'm good at this, I'll give you that one, mate. Pardon? So you're good at this, I'll give you that one, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Question, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. No, because the fact of the matter is, it shouldn't be something subjective. Does it make sense? Like, oh my gosh, the signs are in the cloud. Go, what, 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 what signs are you seeing? What signs are I'm seeing? Do you know what I mean? No, because then it's like, 
who, who's to say who's right and wrong? Yes. Objective morality comes from God. God decides. So God has educated us through prophets and messengers and perfect scripture. Now, what's stopping you from living by God's commandments and living by the perfect scripture? <laughs> Nothing. Exactly. Like, you just got to have the will and the, the want to learn it. Everything's done from the, so, the at the end of the day, motivation, discipline, this all comes from when you know something is important. Does that make sense? If I said to you, um, at 4 a.m. every morning, I'm going to give you a million pounds, you're going to wake up. <laughs> you're going to wake up, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm saying that this is paradise, yeah. eternal life. A wise man or woman, yeah? <laughs> A wise person um, will invest in the hereafter because that's all of eternity. How long are you going to live for? Max? 120? 120 years? 130? 130 years? Maybe maxed out? Maybe technology is going to go really advanced? But how long are you going to live for? It's a fact. We're all going to die. God is saying we're going to die. We're going to go to a destination that's going to last for eternity. God doesn't lie. Allah doesn't lie. So I'm inclined to believe that. So what are you doing to prepare for that? <laughs> if, I, if there was that situation where you were waking up and there was like, you were following the Quran, like you wouldn't wake up because there would be no point if you're waiting to go to paradise. No, no, like, like Islam is pragmatic. So, like, I'm a practicing Muslim. Yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> that makes more yeah. sense. Huh? Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm a practicing Muslim. Yeah. Now, does that mean that I'm just going to sit at home and just wait for money to drop through my ceiling? And just, I, I, every morning I just open the window and money flies through. No. At the end of the day, you have to work for it. Does it make sense? So I have to find that that's the challenge. That's the test. I'm worshipping God fulfilling the commandments and still earning like permissible money halal money we call it does it make sense like at the end of the day look at this beautiful conversation we've had yeah i could be using my ability for other things and i could be very profitable yeah but i've chosen not to that's, that's good <laughs> the best con artist in the world mate making bare money i'll be a heartbreaker get, get all the beautiful women and all of that business you know what i mean but i've chosen not to i'm very humble you see modest as well yeah um but here i am trying to live through the command divine commandments from god yeah so <clears throat> god has given us ways of actually living what to do what not to do how to earn money the prophet muhammad peace be upon him right he gave us a complete way of life. How to treat your wife, how to get married, how to treat your children, how to treat your parents, how to run a country, how to do business transactions, how to do war on the battlefield, how to run a country. country did I say that? Yes. Emphasis. That was intentional. Emphasis. Um, how to cut one's nails. How to wash yourself when you come out of the restroom. Yeah. I say that with my chest out confidently. Like, at the end of the day, there's a divine way of actually being cleansing. Cleansiness is part of my faith, part of my deen, my religion. Yeah? So, that encapsulates in regards to how to live day to day, how to do business transactions as well. Like, Because your question was... Which one? The one in regards to something that has took me on this tangent. Oh, waking up, uh... Why would I wake up? Does it make sense? Paradise, yeah. Remember it. Because <laughs> you have to, you have to earn the paradise. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. So I need to prove that I'm worthy of paradise by being good, by having this polite conversation with you, lovely people. Does it make sense? So if I'm sitting at home just waiting to die, not eating, but then my children have rights over me. I'm not feeding my children. My wife has rights over me. I'm not raising money for my wife. Yeah. Does it make sense? Damn, my wife wants to go to the park and walk in the boring area next to the flowers, like. <laughs> I have to do it, to, yeah. do you know what I mean? I don't want to do it, like, what? Who wants to walk in the flower area? Let's climb a tree or do something fun, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But again, this is, this is marriage, this is life, this is like um, the knowledge that, look, I'll be rewarded by treating my wife, my spouse kindly, do you know what I mean? I'll be rewarded by 
treating my children, my grandchildren nicely, giving them education, do you know what I mean? Giving money to charity. So, the example I use in regards to waking up in the morning, yeah, for a million pounds. You know the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, um, the two sunnah before Fajr is better than the world and everything it contains, which is the two optional prayer that we pray, which is the second pillar, because we pray five times a day. Yeah? And there's one that we pray before sunrise. Yeah? That two rakats, two elements of prayer, is better than the world and everything it contains. Man like me prayed Fajr today, I'm a billionaire right now, a trillionaire. Does that make sense? But indeed, because it takes effort. Does you know what I mean? And then once I've started praying five times a day, like, again, I don't want to go into my subjective kind of experiences, but I've become more disciplined, more organized and more focused. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like my day starts at here. Once I've prayed, what do I do? I, I struggle to go back to sleep. Some people can fall asleep. Yeah. And I've been to sleep. I can fall asleep, but it takes me two hours. So I actually spend, after Fajr, two hours being constructive. Yeah. And by the end of it, I might sleep, I might not sleep. And it's actually Sunnah, it's advised, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he didn't sleep after Fajr. You know what I mean? Um, so these, these elements is like a complete way of life, you know what I mean? Day to day basis. So, yes, you should be motivated to increase in good because at the end of the day, why get paradise? Why not get the highest level of paradise? Why just get paradise by myself? Why don't I help you lot to get paradise? You know what I mean? I do that one. Yeah. So now, what is stopping you from leaving this conversation as a Muslim? Muslim means someone who submits the will to God. Yeah, God, I get one. That was, that was good. Yeah. So, would you be willing to um, say the first pillar and the, say the testimony, then your um, guarantee paradise? Because the first pillar of the Shahada is basically the testimony of sorry shahada is basically the belief in the heart and testimony of the tongue so there's a few things you need to believe there's one god yeah god sent the prophet muhammad do you believe that do you know much about the prophet muhammad yeah have you heard good things about him oh yeah of course I have did he friends. exist good person yeah. yeah messenger of god does it make sense because the fact of the matter is um, that testimony, the, it, it comes with, like, I've seen people who've said it, and it's like, my, why, my life's changed. Does it make sense? Because yeah. now it's like, you're leaving the conversation as a Muslim. What does that mean? I need to find out. What does the Quran say? I need to read it. If I'm a Muslim, if I've, if I've adopted that title, if that's your identity now, you have to look into it. You have to look into it. You could leave the conversation, as someone who's like, I agree with Islam, it makes sense, I want to become Muslim, I'm going to read the Quran. Yeah. But I always pressure people, I'm going to be honest with you. Because I'm like, right now, there's a difference between the finishing line, yeah. seeing the finishing line, and crossing the finishing line. And being at the finishing line. I'm saying you lovely people are at the finishing line. So, cross the finishing line. In fact, I'm going to try to talk you out of it. Yeah? <laughs> The five pillars. Yeah. yeah. The first pillar is Shahada. Well done. Second pillar is praying. Five times, huh? Five times. Dream team. Dream team. Loving this. Loving this combination. I don't know where it is. I can't remember, but you got the stone. You got to walk around the box. <laughs> we're getting there, we're getting there. Psalm is the fourth one and the box is the fifth one. But it's good, it's good. Hajj, 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 yes. So, fasting, is it? Psalm is fasting, yeah, in the month of Ramadan. And the one you've left out is Zakat, yeah, which is the mandatory charity of giving how much? 25%. Incorrect. Lower. Less than 25 percent. Next guess. 10 percent. Lower. Higher. Lower. Two. Higher. 2.5. Correct. <laughs> 2.5. Yeah. You're yeah, like, that's very random as you go, right? <laughs> you looked at like 2.5. Like, whatever, wrong. Like, really? 2.5. In the Islamic State, we eradicate poverty by implementing the God-giving law 
of giving 2.5% of your annual wealth, money you haven't spent in one calendar year that you don't need, those normal poor people. You're, we're going to walk around saying, oh, life is bad, there's all these poor people. It's because you're not implementing the law of God. Um, who's the world's richest guy? Elon Musk, currently. They, they, they fluctuate. Yeah. What did the world something charity place? I've forgotten the name. World something organization. Yes, they said that if he gave 2.5% of his wealth, he would eradicate poverty. Just one person. Okay. One person. Does that make sense? Um, I'm going to give you statistics because I'm like from years ago. Um, and I think it's, it's increased now. Um, 50 of the poorest country. No, no. Um, like, we know all about the top 1%. Yeah. yeah. You know, the combined wealth yeah, is more than, and this was many years ago, than 50 of the poorest countries. I think I've seen like a video. Yeah. And it's probably increased now. Yeah, yeah go on. You know what I mean? So, um, I digress. Um, the belief in the heart, which you guys have, praying five times a day, which is. Um, keeping that daily connection with God. Yeah. When, you, when you're going to sin? When you're going to rob the bank? When? Like, I wake up, I pray. In the afternoon, I pray. Midday, I pray. Evening, I pray. Before I go to sleep, I pray. Yeah. I'll do it tomorrow. Your 30 sins in your diary, madam. <laughs> you're not going to get a chance. It's gone. Yeah? And if you do fall into sin, it works as a repentance as well. It works as an expiation, sorry. Yeah. So your prayer wipes away your sins as well. I don't need... God to come and die on the cross with all due respect. You know what I mean? Um, zakat, we talked about it. Fasting, um, fasting for the entire month. You know science, what does science say about it? She's smart. What does science say about fasting for 30 days consecutively? <laughs> That's a good question. I think... Edit this out, edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful answer, that was a good answer. That was amazing, brilliant. We had some technical issues, um, but I hope you guys got at home. Um, it, 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 it kills cancerous cells. It's a, it's a detox, yeah. Research, um, fasting consecutively for 30 days, like the effect it has on the body. That's not why I fast. I fast because God said so. But then I have this byproduct. This, do you know what I mean? What's next? Um, hajj. Yeah. And fasting as well, like if you're not too young, if you're not too old, if you can do it, then I mean, if you're not on your period, because at the end of the day, it's a difficult period for women and so on and so on. No puns intended. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um, and then Hajj. Yeah. It's a holy pilgrimage. Do you know what I mean? What did Malcolm X say about it? Did you guys know? Most people didn't even know Malcolm X is Muslim. Is he? Yeah, he's Muslim. See, so you, know, you didn't know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's so it's strange. But yeah, look into it. It's like, he's like, he was part of the Nation of Islam. That was like a really kind of, it went by the, that's why anything that goes, has the name Islam, it doesn't make it it's Muslim. So, um, he went with a nation of Islam, a really un-Islamic kind of non-Muslim kind of racist organization, right? That is about white people are devils and this, that, and so on and so forth. And so he, as a Muslim, as a person of nation of Islam, he went on Hajj. And he saw white people, black people, brown people, people, white people with the blondest hair and the bluest eyes, doing twaf, wearing a white cloth, you know what I mean? And it's just like everyone was the same. And that's how we are in the, in the sight of God. Yeah. So is there anything in the five pillars you disagree with? Yeah. So what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as Muslims? I mean, for me, it would be because um, I spoke about it with my friends. Yeah. And he said if I do it, he wants to go with me. Then do it. Call him now. <laughs> Freeway combo. He's already planned it. So it's like... Oh, he's become a Muslim, yeah? No, he's already Muslim. But um, I oh. spoke about it because um, he um, so I had some rough patch and then um, he decided to spoke about me. So he wants to do it with me. He wants me to go with him. How long has he been Muslim for? Oh, his life. <laughs> I would say... Because he'd be my best friend since you too, so like... How about this? Yeah. Take the Shahada, he can watch it, <laughs> and then you lot can go to the mosque and do it. 
because the reason I say that is, uh, can any of you guarantee me the next five seconds? Guarantee what? Just guarantee that you're going to be alive. I'm going to be alive for the next five seconds. Hopefully. But can yeah, you guarantee got, it? Probably got another 24 no. hours, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's confident. 24 hours, I are you sure, yeah? Is it, is it written in the <laughs> crowds, yeah? That's a time. So I'm saying that, look, you can delay it waiting for your friend. But how do you know you're going to live for that long? Yeah. And like I said, you need to that confirmation to enter paradise. Yeah. You need that certificate. Does it make sense? Um, I like to call it the keys to paradise. The shahada is the keys to paradise. So you're going to leave this conversation without the keys. And be like, yeah, yeah, well, going to, my mate was going to... Um, <laughs> does it make sense? I'm happy, I'm happy to look at it further. Huh? I'm happy to look into it further after. Yeah? Same so with yourself? You need more knowledge, bro. Yeah. yeah. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you two Qur'ans. Yeah. Um, if you want, I'm going to exchange details. Yeah. This gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it halal. Because in Islam, um, like it says like the roles between a man and a woman and the interactions. And the fact of the matter is, you're not related to me, I'm not married to you. Like, yeah. what, what rights do I have over you? Do you know what I mean? sense to communicate and so on and so forth. And what ends up happening is, let's not go into what ends up happening yeah. here. Yeah. It's, it's a PG rating movie, yeah? Um, YouTube video. But do you guys have any questions? Oh, that was yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. But have that follow up that conversation with your friend. Yeah. Do you have any Muslim friends? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys have like. Oh, of course. We yeah. we do think about ages. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not like it's not a one and chat conversation. It's like. Yeah. I've had many conversations like this with. Yeah, like it's a, we don't shy away from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a fire in your beard. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Stay. Come, come home. It's come home. It's come home. Yeah. Um, so generally, like, I like where you guys are at because you haven't disagreed with anything. Is there any kind of profound questions, anything that, that's nibbling in the back of your mind that you no, might I think? think? Yeah, I've got a lot of yeah. questions that I've been like, meaning to ask Yeah, someone. yeah, go for it, go for it. Like, yeah. all before, like, all the questions that I had before, I've been meaning to ask someone, so... Yeah. Was that all the questions? Yeah, most of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> I, expected, I expected more. I'm like, yeah, like, here, here's my book. <laughs> yeah. the Chapter 12. Would have come out, yeah. But because we I don't... think those questions are irrelevant. Yeah. When we're talking, this is your journey. You can learn yeah. it. But what's the what's the thoughts that's like making you think like, yeah, I'm not sure about Islam or this one. If this question, uh, if I was only sure about this, because the fact of the matter is, it seems like you guys are sure. It makes sense to you. Oh, of course. We've been we've been for the whole year. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> if you, <laughs> so if you don't disagree with it, then what do you need to look into? Because at the moment, I went through the five pillars. Like, you'd be surprised the amount of people who have a conversation like this with me, become Muslim, and like, just change their life. Like, literally, um, this is one Italian guy became Muslim. He keeps messaging me now. <laughs> yes, he's like, I'm so glad. We had like an hour conversation. You can find it on our YouTube channel. Um, and he's like, like he was hesitant, he was hesitant, and then he became Muslim. Like, I'm so glad that I had that conversation. I met with you. There's this one lady I met with. Um, she was like really procrastinating in regards to embracing it, but she was actively gaining so much knowledge yeah. to the point that she was like a little mini scholar. Yeah, I'm not even joking. We had a conversation. She became Muslim, and the the notes she wrote from her research, she actually made little books about it, and she shares it on. What's it called? Um, Instagram. That's what I mean. Forgive me, I've been meaning to buy it. Because I don't like e-books. E uh, like if it was physical, I don't mind. I'll pay for it, I'll buy it. Um, and that's it. But, and that's the thing. And then again, she's like grateful and she's thankful that look, she became a Muslim. And I could tell a million and one stories like that. I'm totally good. <laughs> yeah, because the fact of the matter is, um, when was it like many years ago I was watching this Dai like someone who calls people to Islam and he said something profound he goes um, what did he say he goes so many people have become Muslim through his conversation he's lost count I'm like what a boss what a don move gangster does that make sense I'm like if I could get one person to become Muslim I'd be like set yeah and then I think when I was at 21 it was like, through a conversation, I became Muslim. And I'm like, Shati, I'm going to be like you. I'm writing down my diary. <laughs> yeah. So I got to about 20 and I lost count. Yeah. So now I can be like, yeah, I've lost count, bro. 
That's I just lost count. So I want to add you to the, the to, list, to the list, the you know what I mean? <laughs> the diary, you know what I mean? 4,677, <laughs> 71, 72. So, yeah. One last time. Yeah, what know. is preventing you from leaving this conversation, testifying to what you already believe? Yeah, nothing, but I'm saying that I grew up with a lot of atheists, very strong atheists, so it's always still that one thing. What's that one thing? I've been for a lot of time, minute. So I still got, I've still got a type of that side. No, no, so the I fact that I've heard from you, and it's like it's still, still that, like, still settled on that one. Because the very built in, like. No, no, no. The fact of the matter is, you know, atheism, right? Uh, it's not innate. People are naturally theists. They believe in God, yeah. And this again backs up the Islamic philosophy that. The Islamic teaching that we're all born upon fitrah. Fitrah means a natural inclination to believe in one God, yeah. to worship God, and to be good. Does that make sense? But the society changes that, corrupts that. Yeah. And the example I use is all your friends. Put them on a boat. Yeah? There's no atheist on a sinking ship. <laughs> oh God, I'm so sorry. If you exist, <laughs> In fact, sorry, the boat is, is, is getting, the water is getting higher. God, if you forgive me, I will go mend my ways. And the Quran mentions this, and Allah gets him out of the situation, and they go back to their disbelief. Professor Richard Crouch, have you heard of him? Okay. Um, Richard Dawkins, heard of him? What kind of atheist friends do you have? Uneducated ones, I'm joking. More my dad, sorry. Is it? Because um, I've listened to the arguments and Richard Dawkins, yeah, you can Google it, find him on YouTube, right? He's a staunch atheist. And then he talks about evolution, he teaches, I don't know if he still does, he used to teach um, evolution in Oxford University. And then when you ask him, like, he will be like, evolution, 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 God doesn't exist. Where did life come from? Do you know what he says? And he's on the record for saying this. Aliens. <laughs> Aliens. Aliens put life on this planet. Talking also, yeah. <laughs> Richard Crouch, um, Professor Crouch, may I say, um, he wrote a book about the God particle. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, that's it. My faith. He's gonna destroy my faith. That's it. I'm gonna go parties now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exchange numbers with women. Do you know what I mean? Bare handshakes with bare women. That's it, I'm living it up. Went through the book. But at the end of it, he's faffing about. He's just like talking about black holes and talking about atoms. And I'm like, he fails to even define nothing. He redefines the word nothing into accepting a um, something. So then that's where some, it all came from. Yeah. So then it's like, it's not absolute nothing then, isn't it? Because you've just redefined the word nothing. So this is your God particle. This is your God theory. This is your book. People are reading it. I want a refund. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is what it is. So I would say that, look, your faith is your personal belief. It's your personal journey. And it's not your job or duty to like, convince your family members however once you've got that level of conviction that level of knowledge yeah you're in a position to kind of have that discourse and dialogue you can lead by example does it make sense let's leave religion to one side people of faith all faiths live happier healthier lives the life expectancy as soon as you become you believe in god your life expectancy is going to go up Imagine you believe in the right religion. It is what it is. Yeah. Does that make sense? So the fact of the matter is, look, <clears throat> it's nice what you're saying, and it sounds like you're being loyal to your dad. However, however, your entire life you've never been loyal to him. <laughs> End of. Does that make sense? The, the, the fact of the matter is, God, with all due respect, I'm speculating, I'm guessing, yeah. Um, it's my intuitive nature. 
reading your mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. It's easier when you let me in. <laughs> um, it's there's another hesitation there. Does it make sense? Because there's many times your dad said, "Don't do this." They're like, "I'm gonna do it." Do you know what I mean? So it hasn't stopped you. Um, plenty of times you rang people home with you. I'm not leaving out the gender. I'm leaving out the gender. Yeah, just people you brought home with you that your dad disagreed with, but he, that didn't stop you. You just snapped them in the following day. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'm saying to you that really and truly, um, we can switch off the camera and we can have a, like a personal conversation. What is it that's stopping you? What's big about it? Hellfire? Living with purpose? Or living without purpose? Just go pick it up on origin after like what? Like, basically my whole life right now, I'm not doing it, like, not having So it's like a big, it's a big chunk. It's a change. It's a big what, what, change. What's the change though? Like, there was this one guy I met, yeah? He had tattoos all over his arms. Yeah. yeah? With me, I, I love those conversations. Do you know what I mean? Like, when I'm not, so I'm like, Tell me about the tattoos. Yeah, he's telling me oh, I was in Spain and this, that, and the other. He's telling me about tattoos, living it large, and was like every night a different woman. This, that, and the other. I was a bartender. He was living his best life. Yeah. Oh, okay. I done my. <laughs> yeah. Why are you lying to me? Because what do you mean? Because if it was your best life, why are you here? Good point. <laughs> Does that make sense? If you was living your best life there, you're the bartender, you had access to beautiful women and Why every different night. Why are you back here? Does that make yeah. sense? It was, it was sustainable, you had money, da, 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 rah, rah, because our oh, drugs got involved and this, that. So I'm like, yo, you lived your life the way you wanted to live your life and it didn't make you happy. I'm, I'm inviting you to live your life the way God wants you to. And I gave him the Quran and he's like, nah. He was like, he's like, well, I'm going to read this book. Yeah. Yeah, really you know what I mean? Yeah. So, where you at the moment? Does it make sense? Because the fact of the matter is, you're further down the journey because you've had that conversation. Yeah. Does it make sense? Unless the book says something fundamentally like flawed or you find a mistake in it, which isn't there to be found, you're not going to disagree with it. No. Your mate's been a Muslim all his life. Yeah, yeah. Born Muslim or revert? I have one. Yeah? Does he seem unhappy? He's a okay, bit okay, okay. Is he unhappy due... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he unhappy due to the religion? No. There you go. He wants to get back on track with it. There you go. Does it make sense? Um, religion, spirituality, it's like going to the gym. Yeah. That's my analogy. It's difficult, but once you get do it, there's no regrets, and it's easy to fall off. <laughs> But then you get back on, then you fall off, you get back on. You know what I mean? So, I'm going to open up to both of y'all. Because I think she's ready. And then she's just, she's just being polite. She's like, you know what I mean? And you should, be, you should be more of a gentleman. You should be like ladies first. Yeah, I can't hold you even there. <laughs> Where's the Happy to look at it. Yeah. Like right now, it's more like I need to, I need to see it. Like, you know, I need yeah. to Grab him, take him. Oh what, what, what's your hesitation, man? <laughs> my hesitation? Yeah, if any. It's it's a good, change, yeah, man. it's a big change. It's not. What, 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 what would you find difficult to change? The whole lifestyle. What, what lifestyle like, specifically? Currently, how I'm living. Yeah. Like. Getting up in the morning is already a big challenge for me. No, no, the fact of the matter is. Um, <laughs> there's a difference between being a Muslim yeah. and being a high-level Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, to enter the fold of Islam, to get paradise sooner or later, be guaranteed paradise, is the testimony, the belief in the heart, testimony of the tongue. Yeah. You're getting caught up on the actions of the limbs, which is ideal. Does it make sense? But I'm saying. That goes with spiritual growth. Yeah. Does that make sense? Once you're ready, you take that step. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> no, 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 because the camera's <laughs> on and I don't want to expose myself. No, no, because before, like, I'll use my mum as an example. Yeah. My mum wakes up for the morning prayers without alarm. 
dedication. It's not even dedication. It's just you have the value for it. Yeah. It's food for the soul. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's not like a chore. People enjoy doing it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like living life with a purpose. So my point is, <clears throat> changes come later. I'm not saying that, look, your lifestyle has to change now. Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow. No, not even tomorrow. Like literally now. <laughs> this, 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 this moment. Yeah. No, I'm saying that, look, then when you adopt the elements and then you, you see the reasoning for it, does that make sense? And you get the spiritual benefits and then you see that sisterhood and like you're welcome into the Islamic family. Do you know what I mean? And you experience Islam through your peers and so on and so forth. Because like at the moment, you have a friend who's trying to get back onto Islam. Yeah? Like, what about a friend that's memorized the Quran? What about. I like that one too. Yeah? I mix myself around loads of How is that friend, by the way? It's quite good. Yeah? It's quite content, to be honest. Yeah? Got an amazing memory, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Profound. It's just yeah. memorized stuff like that. It's quite you know impressive I mean? given that. So, and again, that's, what, that's one of my evidences of the Quran. Preservation is for oral tradition of memorization. Is he an Arab? Is your friend an Arab? So can you imagine a non-Arab that you know personally has memorized the entire Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. Kids as young as seven memorizing it. I know this one lady, um, she became Muslim at the age of 80. And she spent five years memorizing the Quran. And then she passed away at the age of 85, just after she memorized it. Yes. Good timing. <laughs> it's, it's profound, does that make sense? The fact of the matter is, it is what it is. Does it make sense? But like this one lady I met, like, again, she's like really small, like the cutest, you know them? Uh, there's no way to describe her. She's just like a white nan. <laughs> she's just a nan. She's just like, she's got that nan vibes. And she's like a little lady and she's got blue eyes and she's wearing a scarf. And she's like so like really fragile and just, just from like a really olden era. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I'm speaking to her and she just told me how she became Muslim a couple of years ago just through having a conversation with her pharmacist. Do you know what I mean? And because I just feel like, why is she wearing a scarf? Like I needed to inquire, I'm like, I'm trying to understand. Do you know what I mean? Like everything's Western and it's just, just one scarf and she's got the, like, the most British accent ever. Do you know what I mean? Like British, British, like proper British. Um, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, madam, we spoke, spoke to her, and she told me, I'm like, okay, wow. So it's like, it's never too late, but can we guarantee how long we're going to live for? So my point is, going back to what you're saying, and I've already forgotten your name. Claire. 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 What's my name, Claire? You forgot my name as well, Claire. Rhythm. Damn, damn. You're right, you're right. Thank you. Sorry, Claire. I apologize. Double apology. I'm really bad with names. Yeah. Oh, just embarrassed me. Edit that out, please. All right. Focus. So now, uh, <laughs> Claire, um, like I said, it's a, it's a journey that you go through. Um, but when you're going to... What was that saying? All journeys start to a single step. When you're going to take that step? No pressure, clear. <laughs> I told you to take this guy out. No, no. Grab him! Uh, she needs to think about herself. No, I'm joking, clear. You can phone a friend if you like. You're gonna phone and his, his, his phone's gonna ring. <laughs> would, you, would you talk her out of it? Talk her out of it? Yeah, would you? That's oh, deep. I'll, I'll That's amazing. Talking. Can you imagine? Because I don't know, I don't, I don't, I see someone, I see you as someone who is very close to the truth. Does that make sense? To the point that you you agree with it, you're not willing to take that step right now, and you wouldn't even talk your friend out of it. So that's how firmly you believe in that. You know what I mean? So you have his support. I don't even know his name. Sorry, Claire. <laughs> Who cares about this guy? I'm terrible with names, forgive me. What's your name? Wait. How could I forget that? I already memory mapped it um, with Freud and then. Sigmund Freud and da da da. All right, sorry, Claire. Yes, you're you're the only Claire here, Claire. Wait, you didn't finish asking the question. 
Um, so yeah, where you at? Like, what's because you you mentioned a hesitation in regards to you're not willing to make the changes. Um, but I'm saying the changes are growth. It's like it's gonna happen so slowly. You're not even gonna notice, and you're gonna gain motivation to make those changes once you have motivation. Does that make sense? I just want you to walk away with the keys to paradise to yeah. affirm what you already believe. If you didn't believe it, then we'll be having a different conversation. I'll be like, yeah, well, let's continue this conversation next Saturday because I'm here every Saturdays and then get you to affirm, like, believe the right thing. You have the right belief um, that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah and um, the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. So it's just about testifying to that belief. So, do you want to do it? I don't know. We can always sure. have a look at the box. And then next Saturday we come down. I told you to grab it. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you so much for it. What I'll do, I'm going to give you guys the Quran. We come um, on Saturday, we stand, we? We'll have this conversation on Saturday. Bring your friend along. And yeah, forgive me. I don't mean to pressure you or anything oh, like that. Can... It's just sometimes, you know, when you ask that direct question, yeah. um, that it's like you're, you're forced to think about it. And if you get a chance to go through any of my videos, you see, I'm always asking people direct no, questions. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise, it's like, why do I believe what I believe? Yeah. Why? Do you know what I mean? All right. Um, so I'm going to give you three Qur'ans. Any questions before you go? Nah. Yeah. 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 No pressure. Saturdays, we're here every Saturdays. I'm going to be here every day. Um, and then, yeah, we'll take it from there. It's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, let me get the Qur'an. Give me the Qur'an, please. Do some work, man. These guys, these guys. <laughs> One more, one more. Sharing is caring, but yeah. See, now he's gonna put me in a difficult situation. If he's giving me one, it'd be favoritism. Mean, like, yeah, like who do I give it to first? So I'm just gonna take two and just hold it out. So then that like, there's no favoritism. Yeah, because you know on YouTube, right? I'm not even joking. You know, like a lot of my videos are on YouTube. You know. Yeah. People comment the most randomest things. They will comment the most randomest thing. The smallest thing. You the smallest thing. And be like, oh, did you see how who <laughs> gave the Quran to you? Like, oh my gosh. No, I didn't. So, for all you people who like to comment, yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thank you so much. Have a good one, yeah? Take care. See ya. Anything? I think the main thing is, Mela Grandam. He died, make dua for them because Alhamdulillah, Mashallah, Tabarakallah, you see all the conversation, how close they are to Islam. And yeah, we just have to keep making sincere dua for them because Mashallah, they're very close to the truth. Salaamu alaikum.